this next sequence of footage is, in my opinion, the most fascinating bit of film to be found on this DVD package. We're going to take a look at the work of a team of rocketry enthusiasts working in Germany in the late 20s and early 30s, led by Max Vallier and Fritz von Opel. Vallier was an Austrian who helped form the German Space Flight Society, or VFR, which was an early group of spaceflight and rocketry enthusiasts. He'd originally trained as a machinist, but had never completed his studies. He ended up working largely as a freelance science writer. After reading Hermann Oberth's book, The Rocket into Interplanetary Space, Vallier was inspired to write a new version of the book that would explain Oberth's concepts in terms that an average layman could understand. His book, The Advance into Space, was published in 1924 and went through six separate printings by 1930. Vallier worked with a gentleman by the name of Fritz von Opel to develop a number of rocket-propelled vehicles. We see one of their rocket-propelled cars here in these shots. Von Opel was the grandson of the founder of the Opel Company, a German manufacturing company, which was one of the leading automotive manufacturers in Europe at the time. Vallier saw these experiments with rocket-propelled vehicles as an opportunity to promote rocketry in general, while Von Opel saw this as an opportunity to help promote the family company. The pair worked with a fellow rocketry enthusiast by the name of Frederick Sander. Sander was a German pyrotechnics engineer who owned a manufacturing firm that specialized in solid propellant rockets. Some years after these films were shot, Sander's firm began working with the German military to develop military rockets. The military projects he worked on were supervised by General Walter Dornberger, who's perhaps best known for being the military officer in charge of the V-2 project at Pinamunda. Sanders' story does not end well. He was denounced by the Nazis and later imprisoned. He died in prison in 1938. This footage here shows a pair of launch attempts of a rocket-powered rail car developed by the team. The first launch was successful. It reached a top speed of 157 miles per hour. It was powered by a cluster of 30 solid propellant rockets. The second attempt was not nearly as successful, and I frankly don't really want to know what happened to that cat. The first bit of film we saw was of the Rack 2 rocket-powered car developed by Vallier, Von Opel, and Sander. That car achieved a top speed of 143 miles per hour and was powered by 24 rockets containing a total of 264 pounds of propellant. It was considered a major publicity success by the Opel Company. Our next set of footage shows the Opel Sander Rack 4, yet another rocket-powered rail car, and certainly no more successful than the previous attempts. A couple things to notice here. Notice that this appears to be a purpose-built railway. Opel put a lot of money into these projects, and the high banked sides appear to be some sort of concession to safety. The next sequence of films is somewhat out of sequence. This is the earlier March 28 exhibition where the Volkart R1 was exhibited by the Vallier von Opel Sander team. This was a rocket-powered car driven by Kurt C. Volkart, an Opel test driver who was fairly prominent in Germany at this time. It didn't go very fast. Uh, sources conflict on the top speed that the car reached. Uh, figure it was somewhere in the 47 to 62 mile an hour range. This particular exhibition took place at Germany's famed Nürburgring racetrack, where races are held to this day. By all accounts, it was a fairly successful exhibition, at least in the regard that no one was injured and that the car was still intact at the end of the day. In just a moment, we're going to see a second run of the automobile on that day. The young lady in the back of the car is named Fraulein Waldenfels and may have been the first person to ride as a passenger on a rocket-powered vehicle. Volkart also drove at one point a rocket-propelled motorcycle that was powered by three solid propellant motors. 
Next, we have another rocket-powered rail car. It's interesting to note that there are at least three different vehicles that contained the name Rack 1 in some form or another. This particular rail car is a much more lightly built vehicle than the ones we saw in the previous films. Note that these rocket motors are going to be ignited sequentially. This will spread the rocket thrust out over a longer period of time and will enable the car to hit some pretty tremendous speeds. It's interesting to note that this is clearly a different place than the earlier rocket-powered rail car launches. After a successful first run, the crew readies the rail car for a second run. Note how close the crowd of spectators is to the rail line. Clearly, safety wasn't a top priority for the team in organizing these events. And yet another vehicle meets an untimely end. Note that there is a cameraman right there next to that tree. The team certainly didn't let cold winter weather get in their way, so their next attempt was a rocket-powered sled. This is the Rack Bob 1. This sled hit a top speed of roughly 100 kilometers an hour at a Bavarian Motor Club winter sports celebration. Note the high-tech firefighting gear being employed by the safety crew here. Here is another rocket-powered ice sled. Now, I must confess that I've been able to uncover no information on this particular project. It is fascinating, though, in that it's indicative of the interest in rocketry in Germany in the late 20s and early 30s. If you happen to know who this is or any more information about this project, please get in touch with me via email. The address can be found on the rocket.arrow website. If we can learn who this is here, I'll be happy to post that information via future podcast. We now move into the meat of the program here, and this is why this footage is significant to the ME-163 story. Here we have the Opel Sander Rack 1, yet another vehicle named Rack 1. This is significant in that this is the first purpose-built rocket-powered aircraft ever flown. Following the work of Valier, Von Opel, and Sander with rocket power cars, rail cars, ice sleds, and more, it was a clear next step to attempt to power an aircraft with rocket motors. Their first attempt to do that was with a sailplane that they purchased from Alexander Lippisch called the Inta, or Duck. After converting that aircraft to fly on rocket motors, it was successfully flown on June 11, 1928. Later that same day, the team attempted to fly the aircraft a second time, but a rocket motor exploded and caught the aircraft on fire. The, the aircraft was consumed in that fire. The team was sufficiently pleased with the success of their experience with the Inta, though, to move on and develop a purpose-built rocket-powered aircraft. Valier and Von Opel commissioned a aircraft designer by the name of Julius Hatchery to build this aircraft for them. The Opel Sander Rack 1 had a 36-foot wingspan and was designed to fly on a cluster of 16 Sander-supplied rocket motors. After two unsuccessful launch attempts, on June 11, 1928, this became the first purpose-built rocket-powered aircraft ever to fly. The aircraft was unfortunately damaged beyond repair on a second flight attempt that day, but a significant hurdle had been crossed. For the first time, an aircraft had been designed from the ground up to be flown exclusively on rocket power. What's really fascinating about this is that a scant 30 years separate the flight of the Opel Sander Rack 1 in 1929 and the development of the North American X-15 only 30 years later. So, the stage has been set for the eventual development of the ME-163. 
Valier and Von Opel have successfully flown two rocket-powered aircraft, the first of which was designed and built by Alexander Lippisch. Lippisch at this point is currently working on tailless aircraft designs. His work will lead to the DFS-194, the immediate ancestor of the ME-163 series. Also, German rocket technology has progressed to the point where a practical rocket-powered aircraft is not inconceivable. Perhaps most importantly, the seeds of discontent have been sown in German society, and soon the Nazi party will come to power and the country will descend into madness and war.